Spurs Beach Camps Man and Jack from BAM and we are back over at phase four. So what are you going to show us today, Jack? Um, so last time we were here, we were just in the process of completing the weir works. We've now finished that, so we'll have a little look through there. Yep. Um, we started the demob operation in some areas and completed uh -huh. the demob in some, some other areas since our last progress tour. So I'll go over the areas where we've completed it and I'll show you the areas that we're currently demobbing from at the moment. Uh -huh. um, we might be in luck um, because uh, the last nail should be going in today. Oh, um, amazing. That'll complete just over 5,000 nails and wow. just over 54 kilometers of drilling into the cliff. So hopefully we catch that moment. Brilliant. Um, and Is then, that where the owl was, was it? That's where the owl was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The last owl nail. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then um, we have completed the netting in a couple of other areas, so I'll run you through that. Brilliant, let's do it. So before we take you around the cliffs between Dawlish and Holcombe, you can now trial our VIP subscription for 14 days. With a VIP subscription, there are no adverts, you can rewind the live streams up to 24 hours, visit our railway enthusiast pages, and watch multiple cameras simultaneously with our brilliant multicams pages. Just visit coastcams.me forward slash trial and sign up today. This is phase four of Network Rail's Southwest Rail Resilience programmes and following on from the new seawall at Dawlish and Rockfall Shelter at Parsons Tunnel. It's all part of a government funded programme of ongoing work on the line between Dawlish and Timberth, helping reduce the disruption for passengers by affording the railway better protection from the cliffs and the sea. So I seen a photo on your Facebook the other day, uh, the, um, I think it was late 1800s, was it? Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. Well, it might have been a drawing, it was that old, to be honest it with was, you. It was a really old black and white one, yeah, 18 <laughs> something. Um, but that, one of the, that, that piece there is one of the original pieces off the, the bridge which went over the um, over Dawlish Water. Um, yes, it's uh, holding the viaduct up. Yeah, it? it was holding the viaduct oh. up and, and some of these would have been used in the bases as well. I think this one originally would have been possibly a piece of this joined yeah. on joined onto it but where it was left in the sea you see the split so these, these were all in the sea were they yeah, yeah everything was in the still in basin so when we um we did offer them to the the local history museum but you can't really they're, do much with a three-ton rock they're not gonna have the space for these or <laughs> <laughs> all the weight capacity for them <laughs> yeah. especially that one there yeah um Ooh. no but there's a, probably about probably about a ton and a half each right so we're walking down the hall road now back into cbu 19 or back into the weir, um, as, as some, some refer to it as. At the moment, we're starting the demob operation of the hall road. Um, as we'll walk down through, you'll see us reinstating the topsoil through here now. Mm -hmm. And then we have to rotivate it, reseed it, and hand it back over to the landowner. The, the outside fencing might stay in place just for some time until the grass grows back, because this, this landowner does have sheep which graze in the fields. Yeah. Um, so previous, this was all type one. Uh, we'd excavated the topsoil off here and we'd stored all the topsoil back up near our main compound. And now we're using the dumper to bring all the topsoil back down into this area and to reinstate it and then get it ready for our, our landscaper to give it a rotivate and a seed for the landowner. Um, so the, the, the works down here, last time we came, we were just about to start the channel lining works and we were just finishing the concrete works on the weir itself. Yeah. Though those have now been completed and that asset has been handed back over to Network Rail and the maintainer. So the maintainer takes responsibility for maintaining the asset when we back when we hand it back to the client now. Okay. So Network Rail, <laughs> for all the different elements, so you've got you've got structures, route asset managers, you've got um, geotechnical route asset managers, drainage asset managers. The business is split up to manage the different um, disciplines of the, of the, of the construction. Um, so we hand back different assets to different asset owners. So when, when we hand it back to the client, we will have inspections with different parts of the Network Rail business and they all have their own area of expertise in the, in, in the asset that we'll be handing back. Okay. So like I mentioned, this one now has been handed back over to the asset owner um, and they were really positive about the work that's been done here, um, re-diverting the water back over the weir because previously it went straight around it to be honest. Yeah. Oh wow. Um, so the, all the ground here has been re-leveled and re-profiled back into it. Um, we then have uh, the the stone mattresses there, they're called Reno mattresses, Yeah. Uh, which are baskets essentially filled with stone. They're similar to like gabion baskets. 
Um, and then this allows the, the water to flow back through the, where the gabion baskets are and the channel we've created is, and back down through the weir structure now rather than around it. Oh, looks smart. And then we've put reinstated the fences around here just yeah. to tidy the fences back into the weir itself. Uh, the, the flap on the bottom, um, they, they do lift up. Um, oh, okay, so if there's excess water, that would just... Yeah, yeah, they just lift up out, out the way. Um, and that's just to stop sheep moving out of here while the, ah. veg while the vegetation grows back yes, in here yeah. because when the vegetation grows back in on, on the bank, um, the sheep won't be able to access down yeah. to the water course. The landowner does keep a small patch where the sheep go in just to do just to drink Yeah. because um, the sheep don't have troughs, no. didn't have troughs up in the, okay. the field prior to us mobilising to site. We put some troughs in for the landowner. Okay. And you can see as the water comes down now, it follows that, that bit of a path and gets diverted through and out of the weir, which we'll go and have a look at the other side now. The South Coast footpath is now, uh, well, it has been open all the way throughout the works. We've never closed it. We've always kept access maintained through here. We've rein reinstated the fencing around here. Um, we've had to keep the bit of a funny dog leg in the fence in there and this little gap here just to allow access into the, oh, yeah. the maintenance gate for network rail. <laughs> I don't know if the water was going over the weir last time. We were it here. wasn't. We were, it was going around the side we, there. We were over pumping it, weren't we? Yeah. And so water now goes over the top of the weir. Previously, the level of the weir was roughly the same level as the, the two bits of brickwork that you can see sticking out yeah. either side of the wall there. So what that was doing is the water was at completely the, the wrong level and it was bypassing the weir itself and yeah. just going around, yeah. going around the side here. Yeah. And it was causing scour, scour to the weir. So we've now lowered that. We've installed a structural slab underneath put some um, structural walls around the perimeter here and then that diverts the water back where it should be going. The coir matting that you can see around the outside here that's just to allow a bit of vegetation regrowth in that area just because how, how steep it is and there's nothing contained in the soil. Right, so that'll just be left there. with it. That'll yeah. just be left there and, okay. it, and that is a biodegradable matting as well. Yeah. Um, so it does, it does biodegrade. So you can come on through, you can see the, the profile of the ramp as oh, it yeah. goes down. And then straight off the end of the uh, the weir. Nice little waterfall. Shame no one's going to see it. I know. <laughs> the the outlet that you can see at the bottom there. Yeah. Uh, that was previously connected to the pipe that was inside of that brickwork there. So okay. We mentioned it in the past, but I think I've got an opinion on it probably. Some people, other people might argue about it, but I think there must have been a pipe that came out of there at a certain point in time, and there was possibly something to fill up. Feed the steam trains. The old steam trains or yeah. something, yeah, that, that we're running through here. There's no other, I can't think of any other no. logical explanation for it. This water carries on down this little bit of a waterfall then. It passes underneath the track, and then goes out the outfall into sea then. Okay. So all of this water is water from the catchment area from all of the fields that you can see around yeah. us. Um, so it's just, just surface water runoff. Okay. So just on the way back up over CBU 20, um, we're currently in the process of stripping this area out of plant and equipment. So all of the drilling rigs that you can see here are finished. We've only got one drilling rig left on the face today. And like I say, hopefully we should be completing the last nail as of today, um, which will wrap up the drilling program. All of the, the compressors, power packs, all that sort of stuff, they, they're all going. All the hoses are being banded up. And then this area will be stripped out of all the all the materials in here in the coming week or two, really. Wow. And then again, we'll start stripping out the area and reinstating across the top. There is fence lines to reinstate back through here for the landowner. Um, we've got to reinstate the topsoil, which is all bundled up on the left-hand side. And yeah. we control all of that sort of stuff. Different landowners have different types of seed mixes they use or whether they want wildflower seeds grassed areas and all of those are built into the land access agreements with the landowner okay. along with any of the, the other accommodation work so when we were working with this particular landowner on the left hand side some of the other accommodation works were things like troughs for the sheep in the fields yeah fencing in certain positions so that the feet sheep can access through we've got fencing gates up through the top of the yeah. the whole road there which allow um allow the, the sheep to cross over in, the sheep to cross over in the field aha uh -huh. This is moving on to a different landowner, this bit now, isn't it? Yeah, so this is a, so this boundary line here is where the, another landowner is, and we're over the top of CBU 21 now, which is split 50-50 with the landowners. 
CBU 21 has recently been completed. Uh, the, was, there was some issue with the dentition or brickwork adjacent to the tunnel portal right at the bottom corner of this area here, um, which meant that we had to change our drilling methodology to sleeve through the, the wheat ground and the voided ground at the top of the hole, yeah. sleeve that area and then drill through the sleeve once the sleeving was installed. All of that work had to be done by RRV. Uh, right. And then once the, the sleeving was completed and the nail was installed, we could then complete the meshing in the area. So there was probably about five or 10% of the meshing left at the bottom that needed, needed completing. The compressors that you can see at the top over here at the moment, one of them's in use, the other, one, the other one's just a spare, just in case the, the, the other compressor goes down right at the end of the programme. Um, we've only, there for the drilling, is it? Yeah, we've only okay. recently finished with the other one. We, had, we pulled the, the second to last drill rig off the face yesterday. Okay. So we've got our COS die who manages the interface with the railway if anything potentially slips Boy. or anything fails. You can see how, the wow. how close the guys are working down at the bottom. And then Martin, the former, managing the, super, managing the area for, for cans that cans are currently working in. So since our last tour, there's quite a bit gone on in this area. Yeah, it looks, looks quite a bit different and it, it all looks new. <laughs> um, so we've completed the uh, drapery system, which yeah. is on the left hand side, the, the, just the stainless steel mesh. But where, the, where we've got sections of drapery mesh, we don't put coir matting underneath. Okay. And that's because we want the material to move underneath and fall to the bot bottom of the drapery yeah. si system. Underneath the drapery system, as we go down in a minute, we've then got the active system. So there's about 90 nails in there. Originally, that area wasn't meant to be an active system. Um, it was meant to be a drapery system like above, but there was a slip in the area that pushed all the material down into the area where the talus material is, just where the down material the bottom, is down yeah. the bottom there. There was a slip when we, just, just before we started the project, and it meant that the design solution had to be changed because there's some drainage pipes that were running over there, okay. and the ground wasn't available to put the drainage pipes on over anymore because it slipped away. We then got CBU 22 zone 5 which is the, guy, the area that the guys are currently meshing over there at the moment so the top half of that is an active system which is why you can see the, the small cluster of the tight grid spacing of the nails. Yeah. You can see the team there putting the coir matting on in front of the other, the other guys rolling the mesh out behind it and then the lower half that's a drapery system so what you find in the drapery system is the nails and the, the grid spacing of the nails isn't as often. Um, they're, they're only spaced every every uh, five or six meters in, in vertical height in there. Okay. And then the, the, the mesh isn't pinned to the, play, the, to the face. What we do is we attach a, a plate to the end of the bar, which is in the cliff, and we attach a leash onto it. And that leash allows the mesh to move off the face when the slips and the slips are contained at the bottom. The reason why that section is drapery there is because we're so far away from the railway that if anything did slip and fall down to the bottom of the drapery mesh, there's pretty much no possibility that it would make its way down to track. Okay. There's also a gabion wall which, which is covered in vegetation there which has quite a bit of spare capacity at the back of it. So should any material miraculously make it that far, it's then still got to get over the gap between the bottom of the cliff and the gabion wall. Yeah, okay. The last holes we're drilling are at the top over there. Is it, what's he on, Mart? Two to go. Two to go. Well, one and a half. One and a half. half, right. So, all being well, that should be the last of the drilling up there, and then we can strip the compressors and the, the power packs and all of the, the kit along the top off there, and then we've just got meshing to complete. We've agreed with the landowner um, for this particular weekend, we can carry on meshing through over the weekend just to get his area wrapped up, and, and we're conscious that we want to get out of his garden now. Yeah. Um, because of the hour, we were in, we've, we've been in there probably a, approximately 10 weeks longer than what we'd, yeah. what we'd allowed with the landowner. The owl gave us about eight weeks worth of delay um, and then we've uh, the, the interface with the rigs and moving around on the other face has just been a bit slower than we expected. Uh -huh. Over the back right um, we've, we've got CBU 23 which is just to the right of where the rig is working yeah. and that whole area is about 70% meshed now and you'll be able to see how tightly spaced the nails are over there and, and the volume of nails which are in that area. That whole area right the way down to track is an active system. Uh -huh. um, so again, tightly spaced nails and designed to, to keep the material in. Above the tunnel portal, we've then got the operatives working on the, the catch fence. So that catch fence is gonna be similar to the one that we've installed down at CBU 25. And what that does is it behind behind there we still do have a section of cliff but it's probably 20 to 30 meters away right so that catch fence is just to stop any debris that falls down off the cliff 
and acts as a barrier to protect anything falling on from the, the over the track and onto the track over the top of the tunnel portal. Yeah. At the moment, we've got the rubble shoots which run down the side of the tunnel portal there, uh, and we have cleared all the vegetation off there. You couldn't you couldn't see that really last time. Yeah, wasn't you it? couldn't yeah. see that last time we were here. So we cleared all the vegetation off, so we can do an inspection on the tunnel portal and an inspection on the brickwork just to make sure they're structurally okay before we conti we continued with the nailing down there. And then the team have the rubble shoots at the top now, just taking the drill horizons off the cliff face. So it's a very labour intensive exercise yeah, and uh, <laughs> we, we've tried all sorts and, and thought of all other ideas to try and get the material out of there. The re machines don't reach in the track. Yeah. We, we can't get a machine up there without getting a crane up there. We can't put a crane at the top because the houses are there. Yeah, it's pretty close to the line, isn't it? Yeah, so it's a logistical nightmare for us, that, that, that section is. So um, hydraulics is the best, <laughs> the, be the best method there. <laughs> and then finally, at the bottom, we've got the talus. Um, the talus removal work. So the spider excavator is now gone. Out of that area, we've probably removed one and a half to, maybe one to one and a half thousand tons of material. Oh, wow. Um, so there's a lot of material gone out and the only way that we can remove that is by RRVs or road rail vehicles on a Saturday night. Yeah. So the spider excavator was previously feeding the eight ton excavator, excavator which is still down there. The eight ton excavator is finished with and then we need to start the removal of the plant access ramp and get all that area tidied up and neatened up down there. Uh -huh. Inside of all of this area, um, there's a combination of production nails, which is the vast majority of the nails that you can see. Yeah. And then there are suitability nails. The suitability nails, we install those and then we, we test them to a certain load. So we put a jack in frame on them and we do a, a pull out test on, on, the, on the cliff itself, uh, against the cliff itself. Um, and that measures uh, if the bar moves under the load that we apply. Right. Um, and they're called suitability tests because the anchors need to be able to withstand a certain amount of load. Mm -hmm. So like I mentioned previously, all the anchors in this area are combination bars for the top two metres. So we've got the stainless steel bar for the top metre and a half, and then the rest of the nail that is in the cliff is a galvanised bar. Uh, so the galvanised bars in this area range anywhere from 8 metres up to 13 metres, depending on the section that you're working yeah. on. Oh, last nail's going in. Tell you what, that's worked out well. That's a good time with that, isn't it? <laughs> Five years of filming and we're here for the last nail. Uh, and that was not planned. <laughs> <laughs> it's meant to be. Yeah. See the blue dot just above him? Yeah. And then once we have uh, completed the last nail, like I say, over the weekend, we'll mesh that, hopefully mesh a good percentage of that entire area there and uh, we'll have teams working on both sides, meshing into the middle. Yeah. And then um, we will start the demob operation at the top. So across the top of here, we have one landowner, which is just beyond the wall where the orange power pack is up there. Yeah. And then we have another landowner to the left-hand side of it. Okay. So that kind of concludes the work in this area. So we'll take you over to CBU 25 and 26 now. We'll have a look at the demob operation in Lee Mountain. We'll have a look at the nail and the netting works completed over there. Brilliant. And along with the reinstatement works that we've completed on the footpaths. Cool. We really hope you've enjoyed part one of this video. Please give it a like, a share, and subscribe to our channel with notifications on to be informed of future videos. Join us for part two soon, where we show you the work they've done around Corrington Cove and Lee Mount, now it's open again. If you're a VIP, you can watch it now. Thanks for watching.